Technology permeates our daily lives. It is always important to think about what technology should do instead of what it can do. I'm Richard Ko, and welcome to our Tech 101 with our technology strategist. Welcome to Tech 101. My guest today is Shashank Bhattacharya, who is one of our partner technology strategists, and there's no better person to go to when you think about security and compliance. So let's welcome him to the show. How are you, Shang? Good, good. How are you, Richard? I'm doing well, I'm doing well. So, um, you know, this is a very big topic. Security yes. and compliance is always top of mind for a lot of our customers and our partners. Yep. So tell me a little bit more about what does it really mean to, to be compliant or stay in compliance? Right, so compliance is like traffic regulation. You're basically looking at hygiene for yourself, your company, and also for the country that you live in, or regulations that might come about based on the sector that you are in. Right? Okay. So let me start with individual. Right now, I'm on a journey to try and separate myself from social media for a bit. Mm. Right. Uh, I want to get out of platforms like Facebook, for mm. instance. What I'm doing now and is making it very, very easy for me to actually get out of something like that with a couple of clicks. I can get all the information that I want. I can tell Facebook not to use my information anymore mm. because of the regulatory compliance standards that are actually being put into place. Got it. Right. So for end users, it's not really a very, very complicated thing. It's basically telling, hey, this is my information. How are you going to use my information? Mm. And do you have consent to use my information in the correct manner? Similarly, now, when we look at it from an organization perspective, from an organization perspective, you are trying to not only stay compliant from external regulations, you are not only trying to safeguard your customers, because mm. honestly, at the end of the day, say there is a breach or say these practices are not put in place. What you're doing is all of your repeat customers, you're kind of losing out on a lot of business. That's true. And on the flip side of things, uh, when you're talking about internal compliance, and this is a part that people generally miss out. And again, like I said, it's 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 like brushing your teeth in the morning. There you go. It's, it's like uh, traffic regulations for a city. It's mm. basically to keep uh, things in check. So when we say compliance, we are not always talking about, you know, the GDPRs of the world, but you're also talking about internal compliance. You're also talking about how a company uh, makes sure that there is a bit of hygiene in it. Okay. Right. Okay. So there are quite a few things and uh, security and compliance go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. These are actually not separate topics. Sometimes when people talk about compliance, it feels like there's a lot to read. Uh, and the MAS guidelines that we were talking about earlier, for instance, right? So the, it is, it is, uh, there's a lot of mystery surrounding compliance, unfortunately, mm -hmm. right? But if you actually go through it, it's fairly simple. Okay. It's, it's, it's got nothing much that you need to worry about in terms of understanding it that much. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are obviously going to be caveats here on that. But if you go through it, you'll realize that it's very, very basic security guidelines that people are actually talking about. Okay. Right? Okay. Um, final part is to do with regulations. It's mm -hmm. got to do with the uh, compliance standards. It's got to do with, um, you know, uh, all the entities that want to protect its citizens, for mm -hmm. instance, or uh, people uh, in that particular sector in itself. So like here in Singapore, we yeah. have the PDPA, the Personal Data Protection Act. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, and uh, PDPA ensures that at the end of the day, that the customers are not harassed. And unfortunately, you know, with marketing these days, what happens also that we have a bucket of information okay. about the users. Now, this bucket of information becomes very useful to different entities. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, here's what it is when it comes down to it, right? I don't want to uh, affect the users by some fine print somewhere. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, you know, we have a long list of do you agree to our terms? And most of us, ah, this is too much. Yeah, sure, whatever. I just need to use the service. Right. But that could have repercussions. That's true. So all of these regulations are there to ensure that those human flaws that we have and we do not go through all of that stuff, they are taken care of. So that's great. That's great. I mean, thanks. Thanks for giving us that insight. It's very reassuring. I, yeah. I think what what you have kind of wrapped and described is that, look, it's something as like brushing your teeth in the morning, it right? Is. It's something that um, for organizations to untrust from their customers, yeah. they have to put in place some of these measures so that, um, you know, consumers and customers know that they are running a decent operations with all the right security measures and compliance 
checks uh, in place to, yep. for them to be able to do that. So I know that at Microsoft, we do a lot of that with yep. uh, our tools and platforms. And uh, you are an expert in this space. So we would love for you to share a little bit more about uh, what some of our tools and platforms uh, enable, um, empowers our customers and partners to do. Sure. Um, so there are a few things that we do. Right. Firstly, we uh, set up security baselines. We uh, look at where the data resides. We look at how the data is being uh, moved around in mm -hmm. a company. And we look at who has access to that data and okay. what are they doing with it, mm -hmm. right? Um, so we have guidelines, okay. right? Of course, we have read it for you. Uh, we understand GDPR. We have a huge legal team that actually sits and works just to ensure that our customers and our partners are absolutely safe mm. um, and that they are compliant. Now, we firstly create baselines, mm -hmm. right? So what, ba what are baselines? Baselines are uh, the minimum things that you need to do in order to stay compliant. Mm -hmm. So the first thing to look at, and we, we have this amazing uh, tool called Compliance Manager. Compliance Manager, yes, I've heard right? of that. And Compliance Manager yeah. does this amazing bifurcation. The bifurcation is between what are the roles and responsibilities that Microsoft has? What are the roles and responsibilities that the customer has in order to get compliant? Okay. Right? Once we are looking at Compliance Manager, we are already on a journey towards being compliant. Okay. Now, we are basically marking, hey, this person is going to take care of this particular information and is going to make sure that the information is used correctly. So if you, again, if you think about GDPR, one of the tenants is you need to have a DPO or a data protection officer, for mm. instance. Uh, it could be the information officer as such who could also be a DPO okay. as well. Right? Okay. But you need so a, it's really like a mix of uh, technology that we have with yes. compliance manager and also the processes yes. that an organization needs to think about when they are operationalizing. Yes. Um, what compliance manager is suggesting to them? Yes, exactly. So you, you think about uh, just a very simple bifurcation between sales and marketing. So a data protection officer between sales and marketing, two uh, entities that are very heavily linked to mm -hmm. one another, will basically come in the middle and say, hey, just because you have this information doesn't mean you can just send out stuff like that. That's right. Right? Because you do not have consent. So that is what the business process part of it actually comes into play. Right? So this, this sounds really, really exciting. I mean, uh, so before we... You know, I, I really love to jump into the tool itself and really get a view of the tool itself. I know that you have a demo for us. Yeah. Before we jump into that, anything else you want to, want the audience to, to take note of? Very simply, do not look at compliance as something that you would need to spend a lot of time on and go through every single tenant. We already have templates, mm -hmm. right? And yes. you don't really need to start from scratch do every single thing on your own. No, it's not required. It does take a bit of consultation, I would agree, but that's from the business process side. Fair enough. From a tools perspective, we have things built in. Okay. So first things first, get in touch with your partners who are good with security and compliance, right? And remember that it's going to go hand in hand. Okay. It's not going to be separate functions. Uh, in terms of okay, yeah. that's great. That's great. All right. So. Let's dive into two. How about that? Yeah, sure. Let's do that. Okay, let's yeah. go. In this demo, we'll start off from Microsoft 365 Admin Center and we will head on to the Compliance Manager Blade, which is compliance.microsoft.com. And when you do land in this page, you will see what your compliance score is. And uh, the points are divided under the points that you can achieve as an organization and the amount of points that Microsoft has achieved. So basically, this is the shared responsibility model in terms of heading towards a more compliant future. Now, those are further broken down in terms of improvement actions. And you can also see the weightage of each of these improvement actions. So if you see uh, enable self-service password reset, for example, and that's worth 27 points. Once you have completed that improvement action, 27 points get added. So you are a little more compliant. Um, it is also broken down based on different maybe departments within IT for an organization because people who are managing identity could be different from people who are managing compliance. Your legal team might be a, a separate team that is actually looking into these affairs so you might want to assign it to different people right so this is the landing page for compliance manager once you get into the improvement actions you see that you have all of the improvement actions the points achievable and also the different regulations that you're trying to get compliant with all listed down here 
And uh, what you can do is you can basically go ahead and select these uh, improvement actions, directly go there, assign it to a user. And once it has been assigned, what the user gets is uh, the user gets to also look at how exactly am I going to go about doing those improvement actions, right? So let's say I'm going to choose the create mail flow rule, for example, and you see that there is uh, there are updates that are pending here. What this means is that every time there is a change in uh, the way the regulations are coming about or if there is a change in technology in itself and we are updating our technology automatically you will see all of these updates and if you would want to go ahead and um, you know, accept all the updates directly you can do that as well if you would want to go ahead and look into the individual updates you can do that as well right so you can review the update from here now when you uh, have gone into this particular improvement action right so which is basically looking at creating a mail flow rule to encrypt messages you see that you don't need to go anywhere else in terms of getting this action item done directly from the compliance manager you have a launch button i can go ahead and click on launch and automatically i am led to the place where i have to go ahead and do it so it's just here which is um, looking at the rules on the mail flow i'm going to go click on the rules and go ahead and create create a new rule for encryption of messages for me and once this is done the points are automatically added up for me Right. So once we have looked into that, this is this is how easy it has become in terms of looking at something that is directly actionable from um, a solution perspective to going ahead and creating those changes. Now, that's an improvement action perspective. So what we looked at uh, has to do with a couple of regulations like data protection baseline for your organization or under GDPR as well. Right. So um, it's and it's not necessary that it's always going to be GDPR. It could be other regulations also. So apart from GDPR, let's say, for example, if you're thinking about a financial company uh, within Singapore, you have the ABS guidelines. If you are, let's say, for instance, from the healthcare sector, you can also look at it from the HIPAA or high tech um, uh, you know the assessment template as well what these templates do is in essence create all of these improvement actions and then able to map directly to the control mechanisms as such so that it becomes a very very automated process now if it is not under these and it's a very new regulation or so something that is very very custom uh, or something that you want to change as a template or build your own template so to speak you can always do that through creating a new template and then assign those different action items as well right now uh, under uh, all of these regulations if we were to say for instance look at gdpr again uh, under GDPR, you have a few of the um, uh, points that have to do with not direct tech, but it has to do with people and processes. So, for example, here, uh, report breaches to affected data subject, right? So, in this particular manner, it's not so much of um, a case of, uh, you know, getting something from a tech side of things, but this is a process where you will have to report back to the affected users that their data has been breached. And there is a time frame to do that as well. All of the information is given here directly from compliance manager itself. So from a legal perspective, um, you do not need to go anywhere else. You have all of the information that is directly given here, right? It's not just about the tech part of it. It's also about uh, looking at the people and processes. Now, something that we spoke about earlier, which is, uh, let's say, for example, there is a data subject request, which basically is if people want to understand what uh, data of theirs is actually there within your organization, you can come here to data subject request, go ahead and create a case and extract that information and give them a digital copy of that particular information. And this is something that is uh, required under GDPR as well. Right. So we have uh, thought about it from making it easy for end users to start off with this compliance journey with compliance manager. And then also all of the different facets under compliance, under different regulations are already taken care of by this particular tool. Right. Thank you. Hey, Shang, that was thanks for that demo. That was really, really cool. It, it shows a lot of capabilities that we have around Compliance Manager itself. Yeah. Now, I noticed that Compliance Score and, you know, it's like a, like a dial that keeps going kind of towards 100%. Do, do yeah. organizations need to make it 100%? 
you don't need to make it a hundred percent. I mean, that's not really the reason for the scale to be there. Right? Okay. So, so what we are doing is we are assigning weighted scores mm -hmm. for different objectives. It's like entering a building, right? So if you're going to put a biometric and you're going to put a turnstile and you're going to have an ID card all together at the it's same time, it's too much. It's too much, yeah. right? So you don't necessarily need to get it to 100%. Mm -hmm. um, it's good to have it at 100 but uh, don't take me wrong on that. It's, it's always good to have it at 100 But you also need to see the usability part of it. Okay, right? so it's so a balancing act. Balance oh, very cool, very cool. So, you know, it's this is great. And thanks for being on the show here today. Um, where do the audience go to find out more information about this? So audience can reach out to Microsoft if they already contacted with their sellers and you can talk to them as well, obviously. Uh, but else, uh, check the link below on the description and uh, you can probably get started from there. Okay, very cool. Well, Shank, thanks again. And uh, you know what? I would love to have you come back on the show again and show us more around the different parts of security and compliance on all our tools and platforms. You do yes. that for me? Absolutely. We'll okay. be glad to. Very cool. So, Thank you. audience, please stay tuned to this. This is a very, very topical topic in our times like this around security and compliance, especially for our customers and for our partners who work with them. So please uh, watch out for this space. And uh, till then, we'll see you again on Tech 101 with our technology strategist. Thank you.